They go to learn, they go to grow, they go to engage, they go to play, they go to socialize, they calculate, solve problems, do science projects, read, do group projects, evaluate, play tag, research, collaborate, investigate. They go to school, our children, our grandchildren, nieces and nephews, and neighbors. We expect them to be safe. They expect us to protect them. We expect that when we drop them off, they will be there when, when it's time to be picked up. We can expect that this is America and it's simply not the case. When high school students and teachers died in the library and the halls of Columbine, Jesus wept, Jesus weeps. We thought things would change. And we thought that our children's lives were worth protecting. One by one, Students have been murdered by guns who went to school to learn. As the one, ones became tens, the tens become hundreds, the hundreds become thousands. Each student killed from a mass shooting at a school. Jesus wept, Jesus weeps. Each student killed from a mass shooting at a school, a life denied. Then this week, it happened again. Parents and loved ones sent their children to school and they did not come home. Jesus wept, Jesus weeps. 19 more babies, third and fourth graders, killed by another mass shooting with an AR-15 in the shooter's hands. 
Jesus wept. Jesus weeps. For Uzziah, Jose, and Mary, Jesus weeps. For Xavier, Nevea, Alethea, and Tess, Jesus weeps. For Jayla, Ellie, Eliana, and Annabelle, Jesus weeps. For Alexandria, Layla, McKenna, and Jace, Jesus weeps. For Jackie, Juliana, Rogelio, and Miranda, Jesus speaks. And for their teachers, lifelong educators who were devoted to their students and ultimately had to give their lives to protect them. For Eva and Irma, Jesus weeps. Their deaths have gutted us and left us reeling once again. Mass violence has thrust the people of Yavadi into an unrelenting, unrelenting abyss of grief, and they weep. Instead of planning last day of school parties, parents and loved ones must now plan funerals, and they weep. It shouldn't be this way. It should not be this way. It just shouldn't be this way, but it is. And Jesus weeps. Our words fail us. Our tears drench us. Our rage consumes us. Our weariness overwhelms us. May our sorrow become fuel for compassion. May our cynicism a catalyst for the work to make change. And may our rage be the drive for holy action. Oh God, long after the cameras have moved on, may your fierce love and tenderness steady the feeble knees and shattered hearts of those whose lives have been forever changed. Oh God, may today be the day that our prayers turn to action. May our action bring about change. Because on Tuesday, they will return, learn, grow, engage, play, calculate, solve problems, do science projects, read, evaluate, do group projects, play tag, research, collaborate, investigate, and we want them to be safe. May it be so.
The scripture this morning is from Acts 5, verses 1 through 11. But a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife, Sophia, sold a piece of property. With his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostle's feet. Ananias, Peter asked, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds in the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it that you contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now, when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died. And a great fear seized all who heard. The young men came and wrapped up his body and then carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter said to her, Tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. And Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and died. When the young men came in, they found her dead. So they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. A great fear seized the whole church and all who heard of these things. We just heard the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, the story where they sell land and they uh, are going to give proceeds, but they decide to, to lie about how much the proceeds are and, and keep some for themselves, something they could have done from the beginning if they had been honest. Instead, they're going to they want to appear perhaps uh, better than they were. I, I, I don't know. They want to appear more giving, generous, and they lie about it, and they die as a consequence. Um, what a story. Uh, the conservative view kind of takes, looks at this and justifies it, right? It says, oh, that's what happened. And it's good because um, the progressive view maybe tries to mitigate it a little bit. Well, you know, this kind of maybe happened this way instead or sort of that. Um, I, I don't want to look at either one of those. I think we can safely together here agree 
um, that we certainly don't share a view of, of God as someone who uh, does something like that in the story. If you read it closely, it doesn't actually say God is the one doing the killing. Um, but, you know, that if there is a divine or whatever nature there is to that, that, that that would not be a part of it. Instead, I want to look at this point in the story that hypocrisy equals death. Hypocrisy equals death. So this past week, I've been uh, kind of climbing upwards out of a depressive episode that's, uh, you know, caused by my own brain chemistry uh, and the exhaustion and difficulties of this particular school year. So when I'm in those episodes, my body, uh, my, my brain, my heart tend to conspire to numb me to things going on outside of uh, the abyss inside me. And, um, and then as I start coming out of it, as I bump up to a new view of a little bit more sunshine, my brain, body, and heart allow me to handle some of this new stress that previously I was numb to, previously I couldn't handle. So earlier this week, um, when I first heard about uh, the shooting at Uvalde, I reacted about the same as I did to the shooting in Buffalo. Um, I think I said something like, oh, Again, uh, and that's about all I could really muster. Um, a couple of days later, my uh, mom called me and wanted to talk with me about it, um, wanted to hear my views as a teacher um, ab about this. And I said something like, well, I'm just kind of surprised that this is hitting people so hard. I mean, this is just another one. Um, and then I started to come out of this depressive episode and it started to hit me. <laughs> and it started to land heavily. And um, I started to feel the weight of what has been happening over and over and over. And it suddenly struck me that um, systems are perfectly designed to produce the results that we get. So I'd like us to just sit for a moment and think about that. Is that the price? Is that the price? Are we willing to pay it? So are we hypocrites? So some of you are familiar, there's an online satire site called The Onion. Um, brilliant. And eight years ago, in 2014, after the deadly mass shooting in Isla Vista near Santa Barbara, California, um, they first posted an article, a satire article, with the headline, no way to prevent this, says only nation where this regularly happens. And this week marked the 21st time The Onion has posted the exact same article, changing only the details of where and how many. The article, uh, short, 200 words maybe, points out, that our citizens are 20 times more likely to die from gun violence than other developed nations. And that we're apparently uh, that we are in a streak of having two mass shootings every month, something that's lasted for at least eight years. The article accurately and adequately, uh, more than adequately, captures the frustration and the despair that we feel. But this is our system. Is that the price? Feeling a little frustration and despair twice a month. So again, we need to have a holy pause, a, a selah, as it's called in the Psalms, to feel that frustration and despair for real. To feel the fear and to experience the grief. So systems are perfectly designed to produce the results we get, and we don't like the results, then we must change the system. We must not fall for the other big lie that we were already lost, and there's nothing we can do. That is a lie. 
Instead, we must see clearly the bad news, the price to look at the system that gives us these results twice a month, 20 times more frequently. According to Rand Corporation behavioral scientist, Andrew Morrell, we actually have five different gun violence problems in our country. We have police shootings, we have family shootings, we have urban gun violence, we have suicides, and finally we have mass shootings. And if we're gonna look at these clearly, we must see them like the epidemics of cancer. There is no single cause and there is no single cure. So we must also see clearly possible cures. Perhaps universal background checks, something supported by over 90% of the American public and over 70% of members of the National Rifle Association. Oh my God. Perhaps gun restraining orders, perhaps real funding for education for potential owners of firearms, real funding and destigmatization for and of people with mental illness. These things are all overwhelmingly supported in our country. Then why? Why don't we have them? What is the price? Again, we must see clearly that the system we have is based on the idea that 21 dead in Uvalde, Texas is the price. And that we are willing to pay. Is that the price? Are we still willing to pay it? So together we must come at the system. We talked about the domination system in the lead up to Easter. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities or systems. So we have to come at it small and come at it large. We come at it small and ignore those who are saying we should not politicize this because of course we must politicize this. Amen. We must be as attentive to this issue as single issue voters of any other issue have been. Perhaps we make universal background checks, not single issue to start. And we must come at it large. Henry Giroux says that our system feeds off self interest, off inequality, off cruelty, off punishment, off precarity and loneliness. All things that set us against each other and that divide us and put one on top of another. We must say no. We must build together a system of equality, grace, reconciliation, abundance, comfort, care, and togetherness. Because we are not willing to pay that price. In what is it? If. So besides coming at the system small, come at it large, perhaps campaign finance reform. We have to break the power of money in our system that says that that price is worth paying. We have to join in with those who are currently struggling against these things. That is the price. We must struggle. And in the words of a Russian distance, dissident, Boris Kagarlitsky, Struggle does not always lead to victory. But without struggle, not only can there be no victory, there cannot even be elementary self-respect. Mm, amen. We are already paying that price. But together we can decide to pay another price. To build a different system. To get different results. Thank you.
are actually very powerful. At the United Church of the Valley, we seek to be inclusive of all people. We strive for peace and justice among all people. We strive to protect and restore the integrity of our earth. We commit to a path of lifelong learning, compassion, and love. And we invite you to be a part of this mission, and we thank you for your generosity. There is a collection plate on the organ for those who are here in person. And of course, all of us can make a donation by going to our website, ucbchurch.org. Or you can use either Vimo or PayPal, where you can use either Vimo or PayPal. And of course, you can always mail checks to our mailing address, PO Box 1312, Marietta, California, 92564. In a beloved community, people care about one another, share joys and sorrows and concerns, keeping abreast of what is going on in each other's lives, help us to know that we are truly part of a beloved community. Every week we gather the joys and concerns of our community through email so we can share them together today. It will be shown on the screen as I read them aloud. And after each joy or concern, I will say together we pray and we will respond together. Here is so God. Continuing concern. We're asking for continuing prayers for baby Ben, aka Yayan, and Jesse. He continues to grow and is doing well, but will probably remain at the NICU for a few more weeks. Hey, Yang says that uh, Yang is there. Yeah. 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 He sent me some pictures last night. He's really grown. Oh, oh, just all of a sudden, yeah. he's, all fill, he's filling out and he looks great. <laughs> You're so good. Another continuing concern is the continuing prayers for the Fartoon family. Neil had his first week of chemo and had a pretty rough time of it, which you do. He is being monitored by his care team and remains positive for successful treatment. Here is so God. Here is so God. A joy. Proud grandparents, Ruth and Sharon, Sharon are thrilled to announce the birth of Owen Max. His parents and big sister Lily are so excited that he has arrived. Here is so God. Here is so God. A joy and a concern. Reverend Jen is on her way. She will be moving the next several weeks. And prayers for Jen as she negotiates everything involved in moving, including expenses. Here is God. Here is God. Another concern, and this is a repeat, but we'll always continue to be here. Prayers for all involved in horrific shootings at the Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Those families whose children did not come home, for all who were traumatized, and for students and teachers across the country who fear for their safety as we go to school. Here is some God. Here is some God. Concern on this Memorial Day. We offer prayers for those who died, protecting the freedoms and safety of our country. And prayers arrive also for their families whose lives have been changed forever. Together we pray. 
Are there anybody else who has any concerns for George? Um, I was texting with Julio, the translator in, in Chapter Seca last night. Um, he was checking in uh, to tell me, first of all, that conditions are really bad. Their um, poverty and, and hunger is, is just really rampant. Um, COVID is a little better because um, more people are getting vaccinated, but it, it left apparently quite a few people. From it. And um, the government situation still is not, not particularly good. But he specifically asked for prayers for his wife, um, who has feminine problems and probably needs a hysterectomy, but the wheels of getting that approved and scheduled are um, really slow, and, and she's in a lot of pain. So I promised him we would pray for her. Um, her name's Rocio. No, Rosaria. There we go. Together we pray. Yes. Um, I have a joy. My mom, well, I'm retiring in four days. <laughs> and also, uh, my mom's retiring and she's on uh, hospice now. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it's a joy. It is a joy that she gets. She gets to have a rest. And um, let's just make it fast. Let's just make it peaceful. And um, she did it. She's always done. I can honestly say she's always done the best she knew how to do with the information she had. And for the rest of it, she apologized. So, and for me, Together we pray. Yes. Uh, God, I hear the news that she got very sick yesterday. She had the extreme um, vertigo. Mm. She's, She's on tired. line. Yeah. She's on line with us. My daughter. <laughs> I'm here. I'm doing. I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting my allergies and coming along slowly. Figure out what the problem is, uh, but that's why she's not here today. I know she wanted to come and ring the bell. That's so why I had to ring it. Here is the Here is the Anything else? Online. Online. Oh, there's a hand raised. Hello. I wanted to, uh, this is Lorian. I wanted to um, ask for prayers for my father's continued uh, improvement. He was diagnosed with COVID last Sunday and has been hospitalized since then. Um, he's been transferred now to a rehab facility. They say he is uh, improving a lot and uh, they just want to get his legs stronger so he can get back on his feet before he uh, is allowed to go home, hopefully. Um, so, and we finally have a, a phone number where we can contact him uh, during about uh, two or three hours um, of the day each day. So um, thanks for your prayers and please continue them. Thank you. Together we pray. Yes. Anything else? Of your thing, set? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, now you have to tell us. Well, I think, you know, given um, you probably need to enjoy what you can get. Um, next next Saturday, uh, we're holding uh, the nonprofit I'm, that I'm with and um, 15 other. Nonprofits and agencies, and we're running the first, uh, hopefully, first annual adaptive sports recreation and resource fair down on uh, uh, Crown Point Park on Mission Bay. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had three people registered, and I was certainly sweating. <laughs> and uh, and since we've now got uh, thirty-five people registered, and it. We're able to bring a family, so we have 
just that total is about 95 people and 40 volunteers and and uh it's uh it's a very exciting time and we get and it's free we want people just to come out get out integrate back into the community and we're going to feed them that's mm -hmm. all they will come fun and food <laughs> we'll be there fun and food yeah that works that works for me yeah really great and i'm glad they respond and i'm glad your heart is picking up here yeah. anything else <laughs> Together we pray. No matter how we understand prayer, we find that it is good to pray. And together we hold these names and words, spoken and unspoken, in a spirit of concern a spirit of joy, a spirit of connection, and a spirit of prayer. Oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. And may all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens. Listen to our hearts longings healing of our world. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Together we pray. Let us pray together in one voice the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples first in the common version that connects us to our grandparents and great great parents. And let us also pray another version speaks to many of our longings and understandings today. Father, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Save us from our time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The land is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our mother, who lives in heaven and within us, we call upon your names. Your prison comes, your will be done in all the spaces in which you allow. Give us each day sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of our limits and to give grace to the limits of others. Separate us from temptation and heart, but deliver us into your community. For you celebrating the rolling place within us, the empowerment around us, and the celebration among us, now and forever. Amen. Now is the time that we pass the peace as an act of forgiveness and, recon and reconciliation. Jesus told us, told his disciples and us, that before they come to be reconciled with God, they should first reconcile with one another. And so during this time of sharing Christ's peace, we are encouraged to seek and offer forgiveness. And we turn to those around us for the greeting, may the peace of Christ be with you and respond and with you also. We symbolize our unity by doing this, even in the midst of our divisions. And when we pass the peace, we practice God's call to make every effort to make our bond with peace. And so still we're mindful of the COVID protocols will wave our peace to each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace, everybody. <laughs> <sighs> Oh. 
we don't know what to do, we come back to the familiar, you know, those things that bring comfort and bring us together, that bring us close, whether it's standing together on a street corner, holding candles and signs, or on a Sunday morning, eating together and passing out crackers and juice. So here we are. We are going to have the elements, our communion elements passed out. Um, these small things that stand for so much more. And hold on to them, please, and we'll take them all together. It seems to me that sometimes the practice of communion can seem like it's about something that was so long ago and so very far away, um, but it's not. It's about right here, and it's about right now. One of my favorite um, short stories is by Ray McCarver, and uh, <laughs> called A Small Good Thing. And um, there's a tragedy in that story. A young family loses their child um, suddenly, and uh, and violently in a car accident. And um, they end up at a bakery and the baker brings out fresh rolls and says, please, please, eating is a small good thing at a time like this. And if that doesn't capture somehow the idea I think that Jesus had when he said, hey, when you guys get together and you do this, right? Remember me, think of me, think about what I'm doing and what I did and what you guys are doing and what you guys can do. When you take this bread as a symbol of what I've done for you, and when you drink this cup as a symbol of, of what's changing and what has changed, think of me. So look around at all of you. At this time, I think that it's a little bit of eating. It's a small good thing at a time like this. Let's partake together. 
have done so. Join me in this prayer. Holy God, we have made the bread and the wine. We have been touched by your spirit and we are thankful. Still speaking, God, as we go from this place to be a church in the world, may the fullness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit be in us. May the gifts of your spirit be in our lives and strength today and in the days to come. Off self interest, inequality, cruelty, punishment, precarity, and loneliness. May we find divine strength to together build a system of equality, grace, reconciliation, abundance, comfort, care, and togetherness. May we find that divine strength. May we do what we know we need to do. Amen. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure. You can start calling it at the same time. Sure, yeah. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>